Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Next Gen Worship Wow, Worship Without Walls. Thank you for joining us this morning. It is so good to be here and to be in front of you this morning. All right, before we get started, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we glorify you and praise you. We lift you up. Thank you for another opportunity to be a blessing, God, to someone today. Let your Holy Spirit increase while your your vessel it decreases, God, in the name of Jesus. We just glorify you and praise you. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, listen. So this morning, I'm going to try not to be before you long. The devil done already tried me. He done already started, so to speak, right? Um, and today's message, today's message ain't nothing but, um, like, something about what we're going through. So today's message is, <laughs> is your own mind against you? Yes. Is your own mind against you? Um, I like my little topic slide, so I want to uh, show you guys that before we we get going. So let me let me show you that. We need to set our mind. Set your mind, y'all. <laughs> Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where your action is. See things from His perspective. That's one thing that we get so caught up in. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 what we get caught up in. We get caught up in our own thoughts. And so I'm I'm gonna give you <laughs> I'll give you some scripture and I'm gonna give you uh, a couple of scenarios, right? So have you ever? Come on, I need you to be honest with me this morning. Have you ever had a full-on conversation from start to beginning with somebody else actually by yourself? Let me pause a little bit. And I'm going to say it again slower. Have you had a conversation with someone else by yourself? Let me give you an understanding of what I mean by that. I'm going to use myself as a... uh, as an example, because I can do that, uh, because I know myself and I've done it. So I can use myself as an example. So here goes. So you having a problem with somebody, right? Or they done got on your nerves or you feel like you got to confront a situation and um, you ain't got to that person yet, but you have a whole conversation and it kind of goes like this. So when I see him, I'm going to say this. And then when I say that, I know he going to respond like this. So When he says that, I'm going to say this. And then he going to say this, and I'm going to say this. And then he going to say that, and I'm going to say this. And then by the time you done having the whole conversation, you mad. (laughs) And what the devil did is he put that person's name on your responses to your questions. And now you mad at that person because of what you think they was going to say to what you had to say. And so what you actually did was had a conversation with your mind and your mind and the devil attacked you. So your thoughts was working against you. So you mad. And by the time you see this person, what you wanted to talk to them about your feelings and all your emotions is up here. And that person has no idea what they did. They have no idea that you had a conversation with them without them actually being present. And you done already made up your mind on what they was thinking, how they was going to react, and uh, that it wasn't going to work. And they was already against you. Now, like I said, I can't speak for nobody else, and they mind. (laughs) But I know I've done it, and I've had to tell myself, self, they not here, self. Self, they didn't respond that way, self. And self, you need to quiet down your thoughts because your thoughts is going to get you in trouble, self. Or maybe, maybe you're having a, are having a problem and your mind is against you. You can't sleep. Now, I'm going to tell you this. 
I learn from my own mistakes. I don't need to watch other people. I don't need to. God doesn't need to use other people's problems and other people's issues for me to learn because he used my own. I have enough of my own to where he, admit, he uses my own issues to teach me. So for the last few weeks or so, I haven't been able to sleep because my thoughts have just been all over the place. My thoughts have been attacking me to where I can't sleep. I have all kind of bad scenarios running through my head. I have all kind of thoughts and all kind of bad dreams and stuff. And the end results to them all are horrific. I sit here, you know, and this quarantine, um, Please check on people that you know that are alone in this quarantine and are stuck by themselves. You know already that their mind ain't right. And so now they're stuck in the house and stuck in there with their own self and their own thoughts. And their thoughts were bad when they were able to be around people all the time. They they couldn't get their thoughts under control and their thoughts were attacking them and against them. Um, so I need you to check on them. Pray for them. Check on them. A, a little hello, a little text, a little are you okay? Won't, won't they, it, it, you know, it won't hurt you, but it'll help them out a lot. You already know they sitting in their house playing around with their thoughts about the people that have done them wrong or embarrassed them or or whatever. You already know they wasn't right before the quarantine. So you know while they're hitting the quarantine, they got all this time and all this social media avenues, you know, to uh um to think and and to get to either get that person back or or ruin that person's life. Or it, it could be somebody that's in the same house with them. You know, that's the loneliest place to be is in a house with people and you're alone, you know, and especially alone with your own thoughts. Um, and that's a lonely place to be, really, when you're in a place uh, in a house with people and you're alone. Um, the enemy really can wreak havoc on that open door. So I need y'all to, you know, those that are strong in themselves and strong in the Lord, I need you guys to bear up the infirmities of the weak. And that's what the word says. I'm going to need you to do that because the Bible says for us to do it. Okay. All right. So um, let me, let me get to some of these scriptures. The scriptures that we're going to be using today is Proverbs chapter four, verse 20 through 23. We're also going to be looking at Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, and uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 6. Now, 2 Corinthians is going to be our main focus because it talks about, you know, the mind and where it doesn't need to go. Also, we're going to be looking at... Um, uh, Stephen Furtek, Pastor Stephen Furtek, and he has a, a message that I'm going to allow him to bring to you guys today um, that talk about when, you when your thoughts attack you. So this is a serious thing. This is not something that I just pulled out of thin air and was like, oh, let me figure out something to talk to the people about. This is serious. This is serious. This is something that God had brought to me that I've been dealing with. It hurts when you're alone with your thoughts, you know, and it doesn't just hurt you. It hurts other people when you assume what that person is thinking and what that person is, 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 is going to say based on a conversation you have with yourself. And if you think about that, those thoughts don't make you a secure person. If you have a whole conversation with yourself and it comes out negative, that doesn't mean that you're a secure person. It means that you're an insecure person. And rather than being someone that steps up boldly and deals with a situation, you'd rather have a conversation with yourself and work it out all by yourself rather than allowing that person's uh, opinions and defense to be in play. It makes you a selfish person and really insecure. Okay, so I'm and, and listen, listen, I'm speaking for myself because, you know, I know myself better than anybody else know myself except God. Um, and that's really all I, who I can speak on. Now, if what I'm speaking on touches you. Praise Jesus. You can correct yourself. Hello. Um, but I'm not here to really correct anybody but myself. But if the words that God is using through this vessel puts you under correction, Praise God, because that means you a little bit closer to him. Hallelujah. All right. So once again, I said uh, Proverbs chapter four, verse 20 through 23, Colossians. 
Now, uh, that's in the New Testament. You know, that's not a familiar uh, book. People ain't too, may not be too familiar with Colossians. You know, it's in the middle of all the Corinthians and Ephesians and um, uh, all those books right there uh, in the middle of the New Testament. So if you had to go to your, your table of contents, look in the New Testament, look down closer to the middle of those books and you'll find Colossians. It's in there somewhere. Um, and then 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 6. All right. Right. So what I want to uh, show you first and foremost, let's do first and foremost, five steps to guard your thoughts. Okay. Five steps to guard uh, your thoughts. Huh? All right. So listen, look at these five steps. First step, know the word of God. Come on. It, it, and then we're going to give you a little bit of knowledge about the word of God today because, and, and thoughts, because you need to know the word of God. If you as a believer don't know who God is and who, or should I say who you are in Christ, how many of you guys know who you are in Christ, right? So I want you to write down John chapter 16, verse 13, and I want you to go read that. John, I love the book of John. The book of John gives us a clear picture of who Jesus Christ is. And then it gives you a clear picture of who you are in Christ. Um, so you've got to know the word of God and in knowing the word of God, then you know who, whose you are and who you are in him. Number two, think about what you think about. Sometimes you just roll stuff off your tongue. Sometimes you just speak without really even thinking. And then when it rolls off your tongue, you just sitting there thinking, dang, I can't take that thing back. I can't, I can't take it back because it's out there. Especially if you've said it to someone, you can't undo the damage that is done. But God can. God can pray. But see, if you would stop and think about what's about to come out of your mouth before it actually comes out of your mouth, then you might have a better chance at not making those mistakes right there. Okay, so the next one, number three, reject blatant falsehoods. Just because somebody has said something, especially about yourself, doesn't mean that it's true. If it goes against everything God has told you, if it goes through everything, see, you got to go back to step one, know the word of God. If it goes against everything God in his word has said about you, then it is a falsehood. So stop walking around like and accepting it like you're wearing it like a coat. You know, just because you've had a bad day or had a bad season doesn't mean God is not using you anymore. Just because you might be in some financial straits or, or a situation your kids done gone crazy doesn't mean that God is not still on the throne. That is a blatant falsehood that the enemy is trying to get you to believe. Just because you may have had a bad day, a bad season, a bad year, a bad month, a bad decade, I don't know. But it doesn't mean that God is not the same God yesterday, today, and forever that took care of that thing. I keep telling y'all to keep living from victory to victory rather than from issue to issue or issue to victory. Some of y'all just wait for the other shoe to drop. No matter what your victory look like, the praise only lasts a second. And then you on to the next issue. Um, but let God be God. Reject blatant falsehoods. And one of the falsehoods is, is that you ha don't have a clear mind. The Bible says that we have a clear mind. We have power and a sound mind. So it's a falsehood when you're walking around negative. You are walk a walking blatant falsehood. When you are walking around in doubt, you are a walking blatant falsehood. You, when you are walking around just, you know, uh, uh, unsure and, and down and discouraged, you are a blatant falsehood because the Bible tells, or in fear, because the Bible tells us we don't have the spirit of fear, but we have a spirit of power. And so anything against that spirit of power is a blatant falsehood. Let's move on to number four. Number four says, speak truth to error. So that goes with number three. If something is speaking in error of the word, then you speak truth to it. So if someone is telling you, you have death or that thing has death, then uh -uh, you speak life because God says that we can speak life into a dead thing um, because it's in his power and he's given us that power. If you're walking around and people are, you know, walking around and, and the enemy is telling you that you're a failure, 
um, whether it's in your business, whether it's with your children, whether it's with your spouse, whether it's it's with your your parents, whether it's with your 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 your, fa your family and friends and things like that. See, the enemy will try and wreck you to separate you from the people that make you strong. So you you speak life, you speak truth into that thing because the Bible says that you're a changed person. If the enemy tells you that 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 um, something is wrong with you, you tell him that's okay because the Bible tells me that I'm a peculiar person peculiar people. And the reason why God uses me is because he wants to confound the wise of this world. So he's going to use something that's unusual. Hello, hello, not unusable, but unusual. All right. So number five, it says, put on the helmet of salvation, Ephesians 6 and 17. That's number five. So first you got the word, which is the sword. And then at the end, you got the, the salvation, which is the helmet. Come on now. He's telling you to buckle up, strap it on, and let's get ready to take this thing down. Let's get ready. And what are you taking down? Yourself, yourself, your thoughts, and all the craziness that the enemy wants you to believe is wrong with you. All right. So let's look at Proverbs chapter, four, uh, excuse me, Proverbs chapter four and verse 20 through 23. So Proverbs chapter four, verse 20 through 23 says, my son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, guard your, guard your heart, excuse me, for it is a well spring. Come on. He wants you to know that you need to guard your heart. Pay attention to who? To what he says. Not to what you're saying, because guess what? His thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Your thoughts are not like his thoughts. You, you got weak thoughts compared to the thoughts of God. So he's telling you, pay attention to his word and what he says. Who's his word? Jesus Christ is the living word of God. Jesus Christ, all that he says, all that he's about and all that he's done. That's what you should be standing on. You should not be concerned about your own thoughts and what you tell yourself. One thing I have to get you guys to understand, most people believe more of what they hear themselves say or think than what somebody else says. And see, God tells you that you need to creep that on out. You need to wring it out, wash it, shake it out, and get it out of you and put his words in you, his thoughts in you, because you can't do it without him. Okay, so now we're going to look at um, Colossians. Let's go there. Come on. Colossians chapter three, uh huh, and verse two. Let's look at that. All right. So it says, "Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth." Really, that one right there is interesting. Set your mind on things above. Why would he say set your mind on things above? Come on now. I know y'all, y'all with me here. Why would he set your, say, set your mind on things above? One, because his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Because he's worked out things that your mind couldn't even possibly worked out. Because he can do and the impossible things that your mind can't even think is possible or won't allow you to think is possible. He can do all that. So he doesn't want you to think with your own mind. That's why he's telling you to set your mind above. He doesn't want you to use your mind to work something out. Yes, it's like, but I'm a smart person and I'm, I'm sorry. What does that have to do with God? To God, he'll use foolish things. So if you consider yourself wise and he won't be able to use you, you'll be unusable. Not unusual, but unusable. If you feel that you're so smart that you can work it out without God. But see, here's the thing. That's the thoughts of the world. That's what the world feels. They don't need God in order to work things out because they're wise. So he said that he was going to use the things that the world thinks is stupid. Yes, I use that word. That are, that are dumb, unusual, uncharacteristic of success. And he will use that to succeed to confound the wise. Come on now. Y'all listen to me. Take heed to what I'm saying right now. Okay? I'm not saying this because I'm trying to, to put you down. I'm trying to teach you something. I'm not trying to put you in a place to where your thoughts can get you further. Maybe you're stuck in the place that you're stuck in because you're not using God's thoughts. You're not using what God has.
circumstance, you're stuck in the place because you're trying to think for yourself. We are in a situation to where all we got is our thoughts right now. All we have is our thoughts right now. You know, people, pe people are, are in their house stuck, you know, having to figure things out. You know, we got people that are, <laughs> we have, we have the world telling us that we don't need God. You need the government. You need the government. You need them to tell you what to do, tell you how to live, tell you how to do that. And as long as you're listening to them, you're good. But are you really? Are you good? Are you really good? I'm not talking about people in the world. I'm talking about saints. I'm talking about the saints of God. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about the true bride. You need to get it together and give your mindset to God. Put your mind on things above if you are trying to get past your own thoughts. If you're trying to get out of depression, set your mind on things above. If you're trying to get out of doubt, set your mind on things above. If you're trying to get out of heartache and pain and brokenness, set your mind on things above because you can't do it for yourself. I'm talking to people of God. I'm talking about the true bride. Now, if you're not the true bride, then you go on about your business and you do it the way that you're doing it. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you claim in Christ... And you letting other people know that you believe in Christ and you're making a sham out of who God really is. So you need to get it together, repent, turn from your wicked way and set your mind on things above. All right, come on, last one. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I love y'all. I hope y'all still loving me too. This is serious. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse three through six says, for though we walk in flesh, we are not waging war against, excuse me, according to the flesh. Not against the flesh, but we're not waging war according to the flesh. That means we're not doing it how the flesh would do it. For the weapons of our warfare, flesh, are not, excuse me, are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Huh? Huh? Okay. For though we walk in the flesh, that means though we are in our flesh bodies, we are not waging war according to the flesh. That means by fleshly ways, right? For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Hello, you can't break nothing down that's wrong in your life because you don't belong to yourself. You can only do it by God. You can't do it. I don't know how many times I have told people that. People have gotten angry at me because when when they come at me, it's like I can't do I don't know what to do to help this situation. God does. God does. And this is the scripture to back up the fact that I can't, I don't have power to change a situation. I don't have control over what other people say and do. I can't fix a broken problem with another person, but God can, God can. And so it says, we destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ. That's how you fix things. You obey Christ, taking every high and lofty opinion of yourself, of other people, people of you, so on and so forth. You do it and you break it down by being in accordance and obedience to Christ. That's how you take that thing captive. That's how you fix a situation. You take it captive by obeying Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. So listen, what he's telling you is keep your mouth shut and your thoughts to yourself because you're trying to complete yourself. Keep your crazy thoughts to yourself, give them to God. Keep your crazy thoughts and opinions and stuff about other people to yourself and pray. I don't know how many times I've, I have, 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 <laughs> I thought you were working on myself as well. Cause I, I, sometimes I literally have to bite my tongue 
literally, in order to keep my opinions and my thoughts to myself and I go pray. Even at times that I'm feeling like the fool, even at times where I know I may not even be in the wrong, but I'll accept it and I'll just bite my tongue and I'll go to God and I'll cry and I'll get it out and I'll do whatever I have to do because I can't fix the thing. I can't fix a thing. I can't, I can't create a thing. I can't do anything without him because my weapons are not a flesh. So my flesh weapons is all me. It's all me. And when I put me in the forefront, it tears the thing up. I don't know if anybody, if I got a witness from anybody, but when I put me in front of a thing and I try and fix that thing and work that thing and get my, my right away and my, what I feel is right and so on and so forth, I tend to tear a thing up, tear a thing up, tear a thing down. And then I go running to God going, look, look and see what happened. You see what happened? Look and see what happened. You know, I get to a point sometimes to where I start doubting, was it God? And then God says, well, 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 you jumped in front of me and you didn't let me do it. You didn't let me finish it because it wasn't going fast enough for you. It wasn't moving faster. The change wasn't happening fast enough. So you jumped in front of it and now you didn't tow it all up and you blaming me for it. But you wouldn't let me work. You wouldn't let me finish it. You thought your, you thought your thoughts was better than my thoughts. And mine was taking too long. Oh, I hope I'm talking to somebody today. I hope I am talking to somebody today. Because see, I don't want you to mess up what God's got for you because you think you know better. That's the only reason why your thoughts are attacking you. Because the enemy wants you to think that you know better than God. And then what he'll do is he'll make you doubt what God is doing in your life because it either ain't moving fast enough, the change ain't coming fast enough, you ain't seeing what you need to see fast enough, and so God must not be moving. God must not be doing what he needs to do. I didn't really hear that from God. I don't really know what God is doing in this situation, and God is sitting back going, child, if you don't shut up, and keep your thoughts to yourself because every time you open your mouth and one of your thoughts come out, you give the devil a victory and you steal one from God. And then, you know, we don't keep our thoughts to ourselves. So we do more damage than we do good because we got to spill our thoughts out on other people. You know, whether it's, it's, it's through words or it's through our attitude or it's the way we handle things or because people are watching us all the time. And so we do more damage to the kingdom because we can't keep our thoughts to ourselves and let God's thoughts abide, rest, and rule. Hello? And we do more damage to the kingdom and to other people that we're actually supposed to be saving for the kingdom. Come on. And guess who's held accountable? Y'all better read Ezekiel. Ezekiel tells you that those that are out there that are putting stuff out there, especially if God has called you to ministry and some of y'all done left your callings because you, you know, your doubts and all that other stuff. And he told you that if what you do, because you have been called to a higher standard, if what you do causes one to stumble, then the same curse that befalls them befalls you. Read Ezekiel. Read Ezekiel, I'm telling you, y'all pay attention. All right, so <laughs> I have decided to stop playing uh, mainstream gospel for two reasons. Mainstream gospel has gotten about money and has gotten, for me, God has shown me it's gotten more about uh, popularity and money than the mission and the message. And uh, so because of that, I am putting it out there that I will, uh, and you guys can hit me up on my Facebook or if you know someone, I will be using uh, new gospel artists that are seeking to uh, the message and the mission rather than the money. Um, and it's not because I'm cheap and it's not because I'm trying to get free anything. I'm trying to get a message out. So if you feel that you have a message in your music that you want to give it out, please send it to me. So for these, you know, songs that you guys are going to hear, you've never heard them before. And that's okay. Um, songs you're going to hear from me, familia, my family. We've been doing music for years. Um, my album, Nowhere to Go But Jesus, we're going to be using that. Um, my brother, oh, we, he, we're going to be using his music. So you guys are going to be hearing some stuff that's 
a message and a mission and a ministry that you've never heard before, and I hope you enjoy it. So this next um, song that I'm going to play to you is called When Did You Stop Believing? Sister Solomon, Nowhere to Go But Jesus. loved you and kept you in spite of yourself and in your weary time of darkness you refused to call him for help he bled and he died so his soul could have freedom I guess what I'm asking my brother and my sister is when you stopped believing Stop believing, Sister Solomon. Uh, from my album, Nowhere to Go But Jesus. Uh, okay, so I want to introduce 
This video is called When Your Thoughts Attack You by Pastor Stephen Furtick. And honestly, this is why I had to stop hanging out with some certain people. Because I started realizing you catch what you're close to. Now, if you need to take out your phone at this point in my sermon and do some surgery with that swipe left delete move, some of y'all don't need to lift your hands to have more faith. You need to swipe your thumb because it is your contacts. I caught something. I catch something every time I'm around them. Every time I scroll, I noticed this the other day. I get in a certain mood and I can't figure out how was I so happy three minutes ago? And now, have you ever had it switch that quick? Yeah. So I started studying and I realized that before I caught a feeling, I caught a thought. Now, sometimes that thought is just me going through my feed and and I will see something that won't register. Now, here's what I noticed. You don't feel it while you're scrolling. When I ate a whole bag of Oreos one Thanksgiving after I'd already eaten three meals, I didn't feel sick while I was eating them. My taste buds didn't tell me to stop. So I'm scrolling, and I don't feel sick until after I've stopped. What I realized about myself, and maybe you're more spiritually mature than me, and you can find a church where the pastor is whole, healthy, and doesn't have these issues, but for all of us who understand that sometimes you are, you are mad about something that you saw 10 minutes ago on your phone because you were in everybody else's life but your own trying to figure out, am I better than them? Are they better than me? And so what happened while I was scrolling, I saw them on vacation, and I know they're in debt. So I caught a thought of judgment. Why should they be on vacation when I know they're in debt? And now I feel sick 10 minutes later because of the thought that I caught while I scrolled through somebody else's situation that has nothing to do with my responsibility. Y'all gonna help me with this, or am I gonna... So... What happened to me was I caught a thought of offense, and then I reaped an attitude of frustration. I got offended the other day because I saw God blessing somebody that he wasn't supposed to bless. Did you ever watch God just do something awesome for the wrong person? He didn't consult you. And so... I found myself feeling insecure. The reason that I felt insecure in myself is because I, I caught a thought of offense about somebody else. Now, here's what happens. You become a victim of your own judgment. When you judge others that way, you judge you that way. So when you catch a thought of judging others, don't be surprised when the judgment comes upon you. The less y'all say amen, the more I know I'm preaching. So I caught a thought. I caught a thought, and I realized that the thought that I hold on to, the thought that I, you know, like you can catch a wave, you could catch a football for the game-winning touchdown like Graham Furtick did yesterday, just this very yesterday. But I never knew I could catch a thought. I knew you could catch a case. I had some relatives that did it. I knew you could catch a cold. But I found out you could catch a thought. And then I trace sometimes the weakness of my faith. And I ask myself the question, where did that thought come from? And it's important where it came from because where it comes from determines where it leads to. 
My issue is that when I say I hear from God, I don't hear him out loud. God bless you if you do. I've never heard the audible voice of God ever. I mean, he speaks through my wife all the time. <laughs> but other than that exception, I've never heard the audible voice of God. If you have, I'm not mad at you. Unless you start trying to use it to manipulate people by making up stuff that God told you because God has three-way calling and he can tell us both. So don't tell me God spoke to you something that I'm not in agreement with and try to get me to do something you want to do by saying God told you to. Especially if you say God told you to quit your job because you're just tired of dealing with frustrating people. I don't know if that's God or if you're just tired and need to get some sleep and have a better attitude when you show up. I've never heard from God out loud. So, one guy asked me one time, he was like, when you say God spoke to you, how do you know? Great question. Because I don't hear God at an auditory level. So when I say God spoke, that can be misleading. You know, when Peter said, Jesus spoke to me, it was literal. Jesus was a person. He spoke to me. I was fishing one night. I hadn't caught anything. I was frustrated. And Jesus said, let down your nets in the deep for a catch. And Peter would say, at first, I was frustrated because I thought, you're a carpenter. I'm a fisherman. You do your job, I'll do mine. You wanted my boat to preach from. I didn't know you were going to try to drive it. But watch this. Because you say so, I will let down the nets. Now, when he let down the nets, he caught a great number of fish. But God was showing me that before he caught the fish, he caught a You like this church? Before there was a seat, there was a thought. Now see, the issue with this is I don't hear God out loud like that. And so I connect with God not at an auditory or sensory level. I connect with God at the level of thought, which would be fine if God spoke to me at the level of thought and he was the only one who spoke that way. But I got this other joker. <laughs> they call him the devil. But when I say the devil tempts me or the devil discourages me, I'm not, I'm not talking about a guy in a Halloween costume that he got on clearance at Target, walking up with a pitchfork and a cape and some horns. I never saw the devil like that. I just put him off my shoulder. He's not on my shoulder. When he comes to me, he comes to me through a thought. So now I got God speaking to me through my thoughts. I've got the enemy trying to speak against what God spoke to me through my thoughts. I got two voices on the same device and I'm caught between a thought. One is telling me your greatest years are ahead of you. One is telling me you've already done all the good things you're going to do. You better write it out because it won't be much longer. One is telling me go ahead and speak it and say it and do it and step into it and believe for it. And the other one is telling me, well, you better not go too far out there. You know, if you go too far out there, you'll be embarrassed. And after all, if you climb high, they can pull you down. And I'm caught. Between Caleb, we can, and the other spies, I'm, I'm caught. Caught. Got a thought. I got caught. I got caught by a thought. I don't know how it happened, but y'all, I got this thought that goes through my mind all the time that says it doesn't matter. Just all the time. I could be doing anything. And it'll be like, it's almost, the way the thought, you know that eye roll emoji that you, yeah. It's, that's, that'd be the face of it. But the thought behind it is like, you know, who cares? It doesn't matter. You ever had that thought catch you trying to do something? Mm hmm. Raise your hand again if you've ever had that thought. Why'd y'all raise y'all's hands so much higher the second time I asked you? Um, oh, 
oh, oh, you're not enough. I don't know if you say it exactly like that, but it's crazy how many people I talk to. And I used to think it was people who didn't have a lot of confidence. But then I realized professional athletes have this thought that I'm not enough. They, they are the ones who our society worships. And still there's a thought. It's a thought that's going around. The reason it's going around so much more now than it used to go around is because now we, we don't judge ourselves or measure ourselves according to the calling God has given us. We compare ourselves to a fictionalized account of somebody else's life. That's where you always get in trouble. Now get this point. You always get in trouble when you start comparing your calling to somebody else's. Because when you compare callings, you catch insecurity. When you, when you compare callings, you catch insufficiency. When I think I'm not enough, you know, I, I, I'm not enough. E even the disciples, you know, it's, it's not enough food to go around, Jesus. You need to send them away. How many times have I sent away something that God put in my life because I caught a thought that I'm not enough? They wandered around and around and around in the wilderness for 40 years, not because of their enemy, but because of their thought. And then even sometimes when things are going good, I got this thought, I don't know where it comes from. I don't think it's God. I don't think it is. It's hard to tell sometimes. Because it's not like he talks like this. I don't even know what that was. I'm glad he doesn't talk like that. That was super weird. He doesn't sound like Morgan Freeman. It's just a thought. Come on, if God sounded like Morgan Freeman, you could do it. <laughs> if he narrated your life like that, you could do it. You could make it. You would, you would go to sleep and wake up and just be ready for the day. But it comes like a thought. You know, even when it's going good, it won't last. They'll leave you too. You can't count on them. Then you sabotage the gift because you're not secure in it. Because even while it's happening, you don't believe it's real. This is my thoughts. I don't know where I caught them. I had a good mom good dad. I mean, they weren't perfect. Don't get me wrong. I wish I could trace it back to just one traumatic event. I think that would be easier. Not enough. Where'd that thought come from? I'm not sure where it comes from, but I know where it takes me. And when I look back on the seasons of my life that I was so deep in depression, oh, yeah. And I know the Bible verses. Yeah, I know them better than you. Let's have a quote and contest. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. See my hand motions? I know the verse. Rejoice in the Lord always. And then Paul says, I will say it again. Rejoice. Well, you can say it as many times as you want to, Paul. I'm sad right now, and I can't find my way out. And so now I'm fighting on the level of my feelings. But watch this. Before it became a feeling, Even Paul, it, it wasn't just like Moses was a bad leader. Even Paul had to fight against opposing voices and thought systems that undermined the essence of the grace of God in the gospel. Even in the churches that he started, even in uh, the church at Corinth, he would write to that church. And, and what would happen to them was they, they would... They would they would be led astray, or the word he likes to use in 2 Corinthians is deceived. He says, I fear that you're being deceived by the power of suggestion. He uses the example, he says, like Eve was deceived by the serpent. You remember that story? When God said, you can eat any of this, 
And then she caught a thought from a snake. She allowed something that was beneath her to speak to her. And she caught a thought. See, I never had a snake slither up to me and talk to me. I wish I did. I wish it was a snake that I could chop the head off of it. It's a thought, and I have to live with this, and I have to deal with it. And, and the serpent said to Eve, did God really say? You see it? He introduces a doubt into the possibility and potential of faith, causing her to focus on what is not available rather than what is. And Paul says, I'm, I'm afraid that you will be deceived because there's these... Um, there's these spies in the church at Corinth, and they're, they're leading the Christians astray. They're doing it by the power of thought. They are introducing the thought into the church that you need something other than Christ to justify you. He says, I fear that you have been led astray from your pure devotion to Christ. And pure is the right word. That's the important word, pure it's that uncontaminated place that you access occasionally where you know that God's got you and everything is going to be all right. You ever just felt that and you had no reason to and you didn't even have the facts to back it up? You, you ever just felt that like, wow, I just feel like, I feel like I'm going to make it and God's going to do it and I just feel and, and I can't even prove it on a flow chart or anything like that, but I just, I just. What happens is, the enemy deceives you. He can't take what God gave you. You know that, right? I need to make sure you know that. He can't take what God gave you. But if he can get you to catch a thought that opposes it, he can keep you so weak that you will not walk into it. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. All right, so that was pretty good right there. Um, that's Pastor uh, Furtech. Yes, you guys can find him live on uh, on YouTube. Um, he's pretty, pretty awesome. He's pretty awesome. But going back to what he said about your thoughts, you know, a lot of times we just continue to let our thoughts uh, get away from us. And, you know, the, the, the Bible talks about us getting our bodies and our mouths and all that stuff you know, to bridle them in, in James. And it talks about that and getting them under control. And so sin starts with a thought, you know, your attitude and, and how you treat people, how you deal with people and all that starts with a thought. So if you don't have your, your, your mind under control at, with a sound mind, then you could ruin a lot of things for yourself and for other people because you have chosen not to get your thoughts under control. And then you you can be, uh, you know, uh, uh, pray for other people that you know are having a hard time, you know, with their thoughts. I, I wanted to bring you this today because God just wouldn't let go of me. He just wouldn't. He wouldn't let it go. Uh, because he, he was telling me, you keep beating yourself up and, and you're running thoughts through your head and you're not enough for you, and but you're enough for me. And oh Lord, when he hit me with that, uh, me being enough for him and, you know, because my big concern was, you know, was I enough for the people around me and was, you know, who I am enough and was it going to be enough, you know, to, to do what I needed to do, you know, for him and, you know, and, and all this stuff. And he said, you're enough for me. Get out of your head. Get out of your head. Get out of your head. Put my thoughts in your head because you're going to tear yourself down if you don't get out of your head. So he, he could reminded me that I had a sound mind. And after I got a hold to that thing right there, I had a sound sleep. Hello. <laughs> I had a sound sleep. Um, and I, I, my, my situation wasn't no better. It didn't look no better. It didn't get no better. But Lord Jesus, I had a sound sleep when I got an understanding that even through my situation is quarantine you know, my hard times, the hard people that are, you know, uh, I'm dealing with or, or whatever the situation is, that I could have a sound mind because the enemy is out to steal your mind. Because if he can get in your thoughts and make you think his thoughts and not thought God's thoughts, that's why he said, put your, set your mind on things that are above and not of this earth. 
Because the enemy can't stop the things that are above. But he can show, put a damper, and do some damage to the things that are on this earth. So listen, I love you today. I love you, I love you, I love you. But I need you to understand that God loves you more and desires a relationship with you today. Uh, before I pray, I want to let you know that we are going to talk about brokenness. Um, we already talked about the mind attacking you, but guess what? When you are under attack of your mind, you, you probably are in a state of brokenness. But see, being broken does not mean you can't be used by God. Hello? Hello, somebody. Just because you're broken does not mean you can't be used. Because see, I'm going to show you where God can gracefully break you enable you to be and enable you to be used in a mighty way all right so let's pray father in the name of jesus we glorify you we praise you we lift you up for another opportunity to show you as the truth the way and the light we glorify you today god knowing that you have done everything already and put things in place for us all we have to do is trust believe and walk in it god i thank you for a sound mind to everyone under the sound of my voice i thank you god for healing their hearts and healing their brokenness right now in the name of jesus i thank you for starting with this vessel god and moving and using me for that thing to go out wide and spread in the name of Jesus. And I continue to ask you and those that are watching under the sound of my voice, share this love, share this teaching, share this gospel, because it's good news in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Till next time, y'all. Bye-bye. I know you think I'm crazy for the things you my savior and just say i'm lost for reaching hands out for his love i'll let you know i'm crazy 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 about my savior he's brought me such a mighty long way hey. me out.